Welcome to the Marriage Step Podcast, where developing a long-lasting, happy relationship is the status symbol to achieve. And following my six marriage steps is a path to help get you there. I'm your host, Dr. Wyatt Fisher, a licensed psychologist specializing in marriage counseling. The Marriage Step Podcast is listener-supported, so to help keep it on the air so couples worldwide can receive hope for their marriage, please consider becoming a monthly supporter by going to patreon.com forward slash marriage steps. Quick reminder, I am doing the Total Marriage Refresh online this coming weekend, May 23rd and May 24th. And so it's not too late to register. There's still some openings, so be sure to go to my website if you're interested. It's drwyattfisher.com, and I go through step-by-step the top six steps needed for marriage happiness. So I highly recommend you going through my course at some point if you haven't already. The marriage tip of the night is that research shows the average couple, because of work, kids, and hobbies, the average couple only spends four minutes of quality time together a day. That's four minutes without kids, four minutes without the TV on, four minutes without you looking at your phone. Only four minutes of quality time together a day is average for a couple. Do you think that couple would have ever fallen in love with each other if that's all they spent together in the dating phase? There's no way. In the beginning when we're dating, we spend hours and hours and hours with each other. And that's why we fall in love because we're spending so much time together and we're filling up each other's love buckets. But through the years, because of kids and because of the mortgage and because of the job and because of the hobbies and because of tech, we stop having that same level of quality time together. Now, we may never be able to go back to those dating days and have the same level of time until we're retired. However, we can do much better than four minutes a day. That's horrible. So the goal to strive towards is trying to shoot for an hour of quality time together a day, one hour. That's one hour without your kids, one hour without the TV on, one hour without tech, one hour just to connect and talk and perhaps play some games together and connect physically. But one hour a day is recommended to stay close and to retain your identity as a couple. Okay, the marriage joke of the night is there was a woman and she was noticing her husband looked really depressed. It had been raining for several days and he was looking through the window, just looking really depressed. And so she concluded, if he continues to look like that, I guess I'm gonna have to let him inside. (laughs) Okay, the marriage message of the night. So tonight I'm gonna be fielding questions. I'm always encouraging listeners to send me questions. And this past week on my Facebook page, I just posted, what are your top marriage questions? And I had lots of questions coming in. And so I'm gonna address some of them here. Now, when I address questions, I take out the names just so that you feel comfortable asking questions because I'm not gonna rat you out. I'm not gonna say your name. I'm not gonna share any identifying information just to protect your confidentiality. So the first question, I feel like I'm constantly working harder on the marriage than my partner. What should I do? Have you been there? Feeling like you're working harder than your partner? That's a terrible feeling to have. So I'd recommend a few things if you're in this place. First thing is to unpack why. To uncover with your partner what's making them not very motivated to work on the marriage. Maybe they're resentful at something. Maybe they don't see the benefits for them of working on the marriage. Perhaps the way you wanna work on the marriage is not the way they wanna work on the marriage. You wanna understand the why. What's the why behind their behavior? If having that discussion doesn't uncover the why so that you can resolve it, the next step would be going to a marriage counselor. And going to a marriage counselor, that could help you uncover the why, with why they're not motivated, and what's blocking them from wanting to, to work on the marriage, because marriage does take work to have a good one. If after three to six months of marriage counseling, they're still not motivated to work on the marriage, I would encourage you to get a separation because no one deserves to be in a relationship where you're not both equally working at it. And if you've already gone through the trouble of seeing a marriage counselor and they're still not willing to work on the marriage, you need to have a separation because a lot of times that's what it's going to take to get their attention, to finally be motivated to make some changes. Second question, how do I know when my marriage is over? 
It's a sad question, but it happens. How do I know when my marriage is over? One way you know is if you're abused. If you're abused on any level, verbally, physically, sexually by your partner, your marriage is over. Another way you know your marriage is over is if you've experienced infidelity. Some couples can make it through infidelity and heal, but it's very difficult and there's a narrow road. You may want to check out my article on my website, on my blog, which is the 10 steps to a fair recovery. But a lot of couples that go through affairs don't make it. So that's another sign that your marriage may be over. The third sign you know that your marriage is over is if both of you aren't willing to work at the marriage, which relates to the previous question. Marriage takes two active, motivated partners. If you're both not willing and able and motivated to tend to the marriage and work at it, your marriage will not get better. And that's a sign that it could be over. Okay, number three, the third question is, my husband travels 80% of the month and we have no intimacy. What should I do? This is so sad to see this. And I see it a lot with the couples I work with where one couple is constantly traveling. Traveling is poison to marriage for two reasons. One is when you're traveling, you can't be together to fill up each other's love buckets. You can't meet each other's needs when you're apart. And two, the more you travel, the more temptation you're probably gonna experience, both for, both for the person traveling and for the person at home. So couples who experience this, where one partner or both are traveling a lot, they normally don't make it. So for this person asking this question, my recommendation would be you have to make a choice. Are you gonna choose your partner's career and sacrifice your marriage? Or are you gonna sacrifice his career to prioritize the marriage? Because you can't have both. You can't travel all the time and expect to have a good marriage. It doesn't work like that. You have to do one or the other. If you're gonna travel a lot, don't get married. If you're gonna have a good marriage, find a job where travel is at a minimum because you're not gonna have a good marriage unless you're with your partner at least three-fourths of the month. You wanna be with your partner at least 75% of the time because it requires that to tend to them, to nurture them, to fill up their love bucket. If you're gone, you can't do that. So for this lady asking this question, I would have a hard conversation with your husband and talk about what other career tracks would work for both of you so that travels at a minimum so that you're prioritizing your marriage. Okay, number four is connected to this question, but it's a little different. How can we keep our relationship alive long distance? So some of you right now during COVID might be separated from your partner, perhaps because of work or perhaps perhaps because of the quarantine, whatever it is, but you may find yourself for short periods of time having a long distance relationship. The key word there is short term. If you know you're gonna be separated from your partner just for say three months or six months, you can make that work and I'll give you some tips how. But if it's a long-term setup, the relationship is probably over because you're not gonna be able to make it through because you're not gonna be able to fill up each other's love buckets, which is what I, what I just talked about. So if you're in a short-term, long-distance setup with your partner, a couple tips. One, make sure you're having a daily video chat. You wanna see your partner. You wanna read their, their verbals and their non-verbals. You can't do that just over the phone. So have a daily video chat. During the video chat, make sure you're doing your head heart check. The head is talking about everything you did throughout the day. The heart is what did you feel during the day and why. So mad, sad, glad or fear and why. That cultivates emotional intimacy. When you get down to that level of sharing your heart, that's important. A lot of couples don't do that. Another tip during the video chat is play a game together for some entertainment. Another idea is to grow together. So maybe read a, a marriage book together or listen to this podcast together, something where you're growing together. Another option is to surprise one another with some gifts from Amazon here and there to show that you're thinking about each other. Also, I'd recommend making sure you see each other no less than once a month so you can connect physically as well. Okay, number five, and this is the last question I'm going to cover for tonight, is a person wrote in and they said, we don't share a bedroom. Is that okay? 
That's an interesting question. And this can happen for a variety of factors. Maybe you don't sleep well together. Maybe you have different sleep patterns. One of you likes to go to bed early. One of you likes to go to bed late. Maybe one of you snores and it's hard for the other person to sleep. My wife is a very light sleeper. And so she can sometimes have a hard time sleeping in, my, in our bed together. We do share a bed. But she can have a hard time sometimes because if I go get up to use the restroom, it wakes her up. If the dog rolls around in the kennel that's in our bedroom, it wakes her up. She wakes up easily. So it can be tempting at times to not share a bedroom for couples. So if this is the thing to think about. If you're not sharing a bedroom, how is it impacting your relationship? There is research that shows couples who go to bed together and wake up together feel closer together. And that would make sense because you're in unison. You have the same biorhythms and that creates a sense of closeness. So the question to ask yourself if you're not sharing a bedroom is what kind of impact is it having on us? Is it impacting our emotional closeness? Is it impacting our physical intimacy? Is it impacting my sense of oneness and closeness and togetherness in our relationship? If it's having a negative impact on your relationship, then don't do it. Find creative ways to make it work to share the same bedroom. However, if you're not sharing a bedroom and it doesn't impact you, it doesn't take away from your emotional closeness, your sexual intimacy, and your sense of togetherness, if it doesn't detract for you, then go ahead and do it. More power to you. It all depends on how it impacts your relationship. And that is gonna be determined by how it impacts both of you, not just one of you. So if both of you feel like it doesn't have any negative impact on your, rela on your relationship, then more power to you. You don't have to be in the same room. But that is rare. Most of the time, it's gonna impact one or both partners in a negative way. And that's why it's recommended to share the same bedroom as much as possible. Thank you for listening to the Mayor Seth podcast. If you enjoyed the episode tonight, be sure to click the five stars and leave a review. Be sure to send me your marriage questions through Instagram, Facebook, or email me at info at drwyattfisher.com. And for more marriage resources, be sure to go to my website, drwyattfisher.com. And remember, your marriage is alive. So if you care for it, it will grow. But if you don't and you neglect it, it will die. The choice is up to you. Take care.